All right, and welcome to episode two of the Drive uh, to Draw podcast. Uh, once again, joined in the studio with Phil. Um, we're knocking over two, obviously, episodes uh, up back to back, uh, being that a long weekend. We got a lot to talk about for the Absolutely. first couple of episodes. So, mate, thank you very much for hanging uh, around tonight. No, all good. Thanks for having me. Um, tea was lovely and the coffee and the cake after. The, the, <laughs> well, it might have a wine afterwards, uh, red or a white. Um, we, we might yeah. know a couple of people there that might be able to help us out. Surely Kurt's family wines, vineyards will uh, mate, help us. I like it, giving it a bit of a plug. All right, mate, let's get into Around the Greens. Yep. Around the Greens. All right, and like episode one, we want to have a bit of a chat and uh, um, once again, uh, thanking Brad and, and Liv for putting together the SA Bowls tipping uh, competition. Uh, it's provided us with uh, a bit of content there for some teams. And Premier League, let's uh, well, actually, let's mix it up. We'll go Division 1. Let's talk about Marion, mate. Marion, there we go. We've got a uh, pretty solid side there, haven't we? Um, not much. Uh, I know the deeds are gone. Yes. Uh, you've probably got it in front of you there, Pete. Yep. Um you tell me who else is left there? Um, well, not too many losses, but a couple of gains yep. as far as it looks like Ashley Close might be playing a, a, a little more bit more this year. Yep. yep. Um, so Big the end. Hurricanes are around the mark. Kenny Holtham, obviously, a yep. stalwart there. Yep. Um, Tonks. And Tonks, exactly right. Uh, so Linden Team. Yeah. So yep. some, uh, some, some quality players there. They're obviously going to be a little bit disappointed that they didn't quite get the job done last year. Um, uh, from our report here, that yep. they went down and by basically the last bowl, last shot uh, yep. in a prelim final. So they'll be uh, itching to, to go right. We uh, Hawthorne uh, played against them in a trial game a couple of weeks ago, and it was nip and tuck there for a little for a little while there. But I reckon we might have just got the chocolates right at the oh, end. Okay. So, yep. um, but we were missing a couple of players as well, and I think they were missing a couple. So. Hard to go on pre-season form, and Absolutely. actually the Greens at Marion were running pretty well, and it wasn't massively windy f- wasn't for the first That's time ever. It's called the Hurricanes. Exactly <laughs> right. Um, where do you see them sort of fitting in? Uh, right? Top two. They'll be top two. Um, with that, that sort of, you know, they, they bat down pretty well, don't they? Right down the order. Um, so, And with minimal losses... They should be, re- they should be around, around the mark. Uh, some other teams we'll talk about as far yep. as that top four side or top four goes, uh, early preseason predictions. As we report, obviously, week after week with some results, it might change our <laughs> predictions, but it's always fun doing it nice and early. Uh, mate, let's talk at Tranmere. Um, obviously, Tranmere uh, in Division 1 there, uh, generally a club that's uh, around the mark in some mm. way, shape or form. Um uh, Diesel Fetterson obviously providing a little bit of a report there. Um, they'll go all right. So you hit me with the uh, well, not too many up. ins and not too many outs. I think that's probably yep. been the the They're pretty stable. Stable, aren't they? yeah. yeah, yep. Um, probably one of the older clubs, aren't they? Like uh, age wise, yes. Um, uh, solid bowlers, as you said, Diesel Fetterson and. Uh, Peter Marshall and yes. these guys, they, they're just so bloody consistent, aren't they? And you know? Barry Robin obviously, Barry Robin. Uh, is always around the mark. Yeah. He loves his bowls. And, so um, um, so Marion should be okay. Uh, like we talked about with Woodville, home ground advantage might actually come into play for yeah, them. Yeah, Tramere always does. Yeah, I think it does. Um, I don't, As I said earlier on, I don't mind it there, but um, uh, a lot of people find it a bit of a yeah yep. advantage for them. Yeah, but, absolutely. Um, yeah, so should be very, very interesting to see absolutely. how how they go there. Uh, let's move on to Turak Burnside, mate. Uh, you're at Walkerville this year. You're yeah. sort of half sharing the club with them at various stages throughout the season. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned obviously off air there that you played a bit of a trial game, or the yeah. club played a trial game. Yeah, I didn't play in it, but um, yeah, it was out. But uh, I think we just knocked them off. But in the end, but um, I'm not too sure ins and outs. Um, but yep. uh, it looks like. You know, you got the old feasties and guy you're in and those sort of guys. I mean, they're all good bowlers. So, uh, Millsy. Yep. And uh, Milesy. Milesy, yep. Yep. Gary talking Miles, about, yep. yep. Talking about Millsy before. Yes, but, we uh, were. Yeah, Milesy. I mean, they're all solid bowlers, so they're going to be around the mark. They're, they'll be nearly top four or five around that mark, yep. I reckon. Yep. So, I think for them, holding that colour, they yep. did come up, obviously, after dropping down a couple yep. of years ago. Um, they look to consolidate. So I Absolutely. think you're about right. Sort of mid-table there and is about, about right. And oh, always oh. great greens. Um, mate, I might have to come have a roll with you out there. Uh, practice one <laughs> night uh, with uh, with the greens out there yeah. uh, when, when Walkerville move over there yeah. as part of the club yeah. uh, development happening at uh, Walkerville over there. It should be a 
Beautiful oh, facility. Good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, good. All right, let's move on to Premier League. Uh, let's talk Lockleys, mate. Lockleys. A lot of losses. Big uh, losses. Pete, you want to name some of those? Well, Gabe is one. You've yes. talked about the deeds. Um, um, you've probably got Anthony Moffat. Um, uh, oh, no, sorry. Uh, Anthony was at Brighton, but yep. um, um, Cultuses Cultus. as well. So, yep. um, And doesn't look like many ends to me. I think it was Pete? from memory, just uh, talking about it with Ash, uh, you know, they've sort of got 10 or so outs from their yep. starting uh, Premier 16? League side from last wow. year. Um, so it is going to make it hard, but it also gives opportunities to some players. Yep. Um, it'll be interesting to see how Not they go. Sure, on the youth they had there. Um, so yeah, look, it's going to be interesting, isn't it? They're going to struggle, I think. Um, I can see them bottom two. Yep. Um, so, but stranger things have happened. We did talk about it a little bit earlier. Yeah. Exactly <laughs> right. You never know; they might get on a bit of a roll and. Yep. Like, Absolutely. Like some teams, they, they might put bowls in awkward positions that actually plays to their advantage. Yeah. Um, it yep. does happen from time to time. But I think you're right. Uh, that many outs does make it very, very yeah. hard for Lockleys. But we wish Absolutely. them the best of luck. Absolutely. Um, and hope that they go okay. Yep. Absolutely. All right, let's move on to Modbury. Modbury. Wow, haven't they got some ins? Well, their ins is pr um, pretty handy. A lot of these names don't mean much to me, though, Pete. I've got to admit. Cameron Jamison? Nope. No, no. Elliot Webster-Brown? No. Haven't no. Nope. Uh, Scott Wilton, Tiffany Machulak, I think it is. Yeah, Robert Molinaro. Yes, no, Robbie from uh, Payne. Yep. Vicky Postel, Postel. Yep. Uh, James Nayabaum, Mike Evans, and Kim Fromm, and then they've got a Jason Houlihan coming in December. Um, work right. Uh, something to do with work. So, um. Hang of a lot of ends. I mean, they've got plenty of teams there too. They do, they? So yeah. I think they picked up one or two teams extra, yeah. or one team extra. Well, Hayden Harper went there too. He from, did um, indeed, Payne. yeah, from He's Payne as well. On that list, yep. but, um, yeah, Hayden's a solid bowler. There's no doubt about that. Absolutely. So. Well, they do have Prem and Division One. Yeah, so yeah. Um, obviously, Gary providing a little bit of a report there that's on yep, our yep. Uh, Facebook socials. Losses? Um, not too many losses at this stage. Um, look. They they have always had a reasonably solid side. Simon yeah. Dawes probably the yeah, Dory, the, yeah. the big one there yep. for um for uh, or Modbury. marquee player I suppose yeah. for Modbury yep. there. Um, but um, no beautiful not, setup there too. Uh, and and Jose Gill obviously not yeah, bowling as yeah. much uh, no. and he's not involved in the club as yep. much. But looking to bowl a little bit more there um, has sort of set Modbury up mm. definitely for the They've future. The, that's for um, sure. Shop and everything there now. So they do. Uh, yeah, good on them. Grass greens run pretty well. The yeah. dome's got a couple yeah. of little things, yep. but other than that, Funny it runs. Little tracks, yeah, but, but um, it's a good. it's a carpeted surface, and yep. you sort of come to expect yep. that when you exactly. get onto those surfaces. But no, uh, absolutely. Uh, Dave Carter actually, sorry, was the uh, um, oh, bo right. the bowler that um, yep. provided us with yep. uh, the report there. But Modbury having Prem and Div One, it does become an attractive uh, nice. club yep. for, for, for players if they're looking to play yep. at that as well. So, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Um, and Ascot Park is probably the other one that uh, we want to talk about well, tonight as far as the Premier League go. Yeah, I couldn't find them on the uh, website, but you were just talking off air. and um, Some pretty handy some, ends, yeah. mate. Um, obviously, uh, Mitch got a little bit injured there. Mitch Percy, that is, got injured uh, about halfway through the season, which... Did make it hard. I was speaking with the Dentons there. Yep. Um, I think it was around about the state finals time. I did a little bit of commentary there. Oh, they yeah. sort of said yep. that they had a little bit of a bit unlucky with a couple of games going down by a couple of shots, and yep. then towards the back end of the season, they sort of got their, uh, their their ship in order, so to speak. Picked up some wins, and then only just missed out on the finals oh, by a, a very very small margin yeah. in the end. Yeah, Mitch, very handy bowler. Oh, and then bowled uh, with him at Payne for. Many years, and then off he went to Ascot, which is fair enough. And yep. um, yeah, I mean they're going to be very handy. So, do we go through the ins? Uh, Seamus Curtin, I think, came yeah, over from New Zealand, yep. so um, pretty handy there. Back end, I would yep. assume back end player. I think made a quarter final or a semi final at the Australian Open oh, okay. back in June. So, um, has certainly got uh, the the runs on the board there as far as um, uh, that goes. So. Really looking forward to seeing them. Um, a couple of, I suppose, fringe players that yep. will probably come in at the front end. I think they're pretty reasonably at the yeah. back end at the moment. Um, yeah, Sammy Dietrich and Tony Trelaw and, yeah, you've got Denton boys. And yep. So a couple yeah. of the old <laughs> stalwarts. So they'll, they'll be looking to bounce back, obviously, from last they'll year. Looking at top speaking to Mark and, and, and Sammy, they were... 
they were disappointed that they didn't get yep. a crack at it. Yep. Um, so they, they'll be looking forward to that top four. And, and a bit like Hawthorne, they've recruited pretty well. Yep. Uh, and Adelaide, we'll talk about Adelaide uh, as we go along there. They've recruited pretty well there as well. Um, so they're probably, for me, they're probably in the top four at this stage. But I think stranger so. things have happened. Yeah. I'll agree with you there. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, let's move on to around the regions, mate. Uh, you did give us a brief rundown. Uh, of the Brosser and Light, and and like we sort of said uh, in episode one, there any country regions that want to get involved, uh, please uh, send us some information. We're more than happy to uh, provide some information as part of that. But you've got uh, Barossa and Light round one games. I have first week um, Mount Pleasant play at home. They got Tanunda at home, so that's probably the bottom bottom two from last year. Yep. Um, I'd probably tip Tanunda in that one out there at Mount Pleasant. It's on the uh, artificial. Yes. Freeling play Newry. Um, obviously, as I spoke on the uh, first show, Freeling a uh, uh, numbers struck a bit. Yep. Um, Newry looks like they've built up again and always solid side. Stewie Forbes is obviously back there from yes. the whole past couple of years back now. Yep. Um, He'd so be the mayor of Newry, wouldn't he? Oh, just about. He thinks he is, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, give a shout out to Shui there. He's a bloody good bowler too. Yeah, uh, but you yeah, ask him. Yeah, <laughs> I, well, I will next time I see him for sure. No, only joking. No, it's no. all good. Uh, so i would tip Newry there um, comfortably. Angus and Yudunda. Well, Yudunda unknown quantity, really. Um, yep. As I said, Jim Marta and a couple others coming in there. But uh, I'd have to tip Angus and on last umpteen years. They've won premierships. And the last game will probably be the game of the round. Kapunda at, under the uh, well, what do you hanger? Yeah, the hanger probably or the, the hanger, the, the dome the, or the, yeah. uh, the the shed. Yeah, um, at Kapunda play yep. Lindock. I'll probably tip Lindock in that one. Um, as I said, Kapunda a little bit unknown. I'm not too sure of the ins have certainly lost three good outs. Yep. Um, and Lindock have had those few ins, and they really back end of the year they uh, finished off quite nicely. Now, depending on the draw, obviously, we talked about this a little bit earlier and we'll talk about it again. Obviously, the state national sides uh, are heading up to Tweed. Yep. Um, out of that Kapunda side, you've probably got Cat, Cat Green and oh, Jaden in the eighteen yep. and the under-18s. Yep. Um, so a couple missing there. And there's okay. probably a couple of players that might uh, filter through there. So I wonder whether the country associations will do what the Metro Pennant are doing where they might play some back-to-back -back games just to catch up. Oh, could do. I'm not too... And then the young... Uh, Ashton Mahoney too out of the Lindock side, so yep. I suppose that evens that side up. Yeah, two way up, one out. So. Uh, um, I suppose it probably affects the city or the metro yeah, teams a little bit more than the country it's not teams. As many out in the country. That yeah, it's affect, yeah. So it'll be it, interesting so. to see how that actually plays out. So, oh, Stewie Forbes in the. Uh, well, we haven't seen no. the men's side actually officially come out yep. yet. I've got a pretty rough idea. I yep. don't know whether he's in that mix oh, or not. Okay. It just depends yep. on who's in and who's out. He's in that squad, isn't he? But he's yeah. in the squad. That's yep. exactly right. Yep. So, no um, uh, yeah, that's about all I've got more on on the Brossel League. As I said, I'm really looking forward to hearing from some of the clubs and give me some information and um, you know tournaments and etc. Et Absolutely. Et so, looking forward to it. Yep. All right, mate. Let's take a very very quick break uh, when we come back after the break. We're going to talk uh, the second Bowls event on the state calendar, which is the state triple. So really looking forward to that. You're listening to the Drive to Draw podcast. We'll be right back after this short break.
right, welcome back. Uh, we're going to talk some state events, Phil. Um, the state triples is the second event on the calendar. We'll obviously promote this over the next couple of weeks, but being that it's uh, episode two, we um, we thought we'd talk uh, the state triples in the women's. Congratulations go in 2024, sorry, 2023, 2024. Yeah. Go out to the uh, women's state uh, triples winner of um, Hanukkah Booth, Tasman Jenke and Sheridan Bodnar. A uh, couple of young guns in there and yep. all in the state squad as well. There you go. Yeah, Hanukkah? Do you know? uh, she might have been in the squad, but not actually in the... Maybe. She yeah, might be over. Double check that anyway, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He ne- has been a state bowler. Yeah. Um, so, no, good on him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and in the men's, um, it was the Ascot boys uh, really taking it out there with um, uh, Sammy Dietrich, Sammy Denton and Mitch Percy coming up against Bryant, Moffat and Jolly from Brighton. Wow, three good bowlers there. <laughs> absolutely. I wouldn't want to come up against them, put it that way. Uh, 22 <laughs> shots to seven in the final. Oh, so really? uh, wow. uh, the Ascot boys certainly... Did the job on that occasion and really looking forward to that. All right, mate, um, a little bit of a... I'm going to slip this one in here, mate. Um, We've got a new subject. It sure to be a cracking final. Both players uh, of brilliant nature of the bowls played for quite some time so no doubt we're in for a very good stream absolutely um couldn't get a better day for it and uh, the greens here at lockley lockley's are looking fantastic once again mate absolutely yeah there was a bit of dew around this morning so Corey's done a good job in getting him up again that's it he's knocked G- all give the, him a shout out knocked all the dew off yes. running laps this morning so with that dew we'll probably see the green just start to quicken up as this game does progress what do we expect from these girls? Um, obviously, uh, you know, they've been playing pretty much for all week. That's a beautiful shot. The hot shot there from Beth Quinlan and Lee Modra. All right, let's move on to bowls tipping. Uh, we've got uh, the, the boards open again, uh, as we mentioned in uh, round uh, or oh, episode one. Uh, Log on to the Bowls, uh, sorry, SA Bowls Tipping uh, Facebook page. You'll get all your information there. Uh, the draw's open. Uh, I believe that it's being updated, obviously, with all the matches over the next uh, few days. Uh, costs is $25, as we've said. Uh, depending on the number of entries, we'll work out the prize money from there. Portion of that, we want to try and donate to a junior bowler, a worthy junior bowler, or an up-and-coming junior bowler anywhere in the state here, and um, we might be able to get some equipment for them or uh, put some money towards a tournament or or something that they might be, uh, be able to become involved with. So um, certainly look to um, yeah get involved there if you possibly can. And as I said, 25 bucks and you get uh, eight games. And I reckon there's a wild card round and a double up round. And it's all been thought of. There's no doubt about that. All right, mate. Um, let's move on to the 22nd end. Players interview. All right, as we promoted uh, a little bit last uh, episode, uh, episode one, uh, sorry, episode three, which will be our week number one as far yep. as bowls, bowls go. Yep. Uh, Nathan Black from the Adelaide Bowling Club uh, will be our special guest. Really looking forward to having a, a good chat with uh, with Blackie there, and um, I know his thoughts on promoting bowls not only in South Australia. He's trying to get you know games live streamed and 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 get players from uh, around the state uh, obviously playing um, on a marquee game on a Friday night and you know he, he's fully invested yep. in, uh, in in doing that and we want to talk about his career a little bit uh, it's oh. flourishing at the moment and he's going to be playing in BPL 20 there for yeah. the Sydney Lions that's right he got so, uh, picked up there didn't absolutely all right mate let's uh, let's move on to extra ends we're flying through it tonight ends. All right, kick us off uh, some tournaments. Prospect Broadview Bowling Club, Ladies Fours, Monday the 21st of October, 9.30 for a 10am start. Uh, always good to get your group of fours together and the ladies, obviously, uh, probably that Thursday ladies group would, would yeah. be a, a big yep. supporter of that tournament, I would imagine. Yeah, absolutely. Never played at Prospect. What have they got down there, Pete? Is it Four, 
four greens and a gr- uh, four oh. grass greens, oh, yeah. or maybe three grass greens. They're right behind the Broadview Oval there, which I'm oh, sure, as an umpire, you probably know. would have been there a few times. No, I haven't. You haven't no. been out there. No. Uh, they've redeveloped that area there. Okay. Obviously, I think the bowling club, uh, the tennis club, and the and the uh, footy club have all sort of had upgrades at various stages during the year. Yeah, no, Not no, always no, nice no. greens there. Probably that wind that comes from the southwest can be a bit tricky oh, okay. uh, yeah, for most no. players. But hey. Let's uh, give a shout out if anyone from Prospect Broadview, Broadview might be able to give us a little bit of intel into yeah. what the Greens play like. Um, let us know. Yep. Uh, the yep. second tournament on our list tonight is Kensington Marriottville Ladies Halloween Gala Day, Monday the twenty eighth of October, nine thirty for a ten o'clock start. Bit of theme there. Yeah. Wonder where they get dressed up. Uh, they did say bowls closed, but they encouraged Halloween gear. Okay. So yeah. uh, a bit of fun there, and uh, obviously first. Tournament of the season, I suppose, for the ladies' fours. Again, a bit like the uh, uh, Prospect Broadview one that, um, you know, that Thursday ladies group might get together. Yeah. Um, uh, around about $100, $120 for the team. Your lunch is all provided for both these tournaments. So uh, if you can, get in contact with the clubs. Um, I think Bowls SA are obviously promoting it as well. Clubs are generally promoting it through their email system as well. So if you're keen to have a bit of a bowl on a Monday, ladies... Uh, get involved. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, Mondays don't suit everyone, but... Uh, exactly right. Uh, the BPL Cup, uh, the 2025 rounds of BPL preliminary rounds. Uh, we'll start to fill out the calendar and we'll bring it to you as soon as it becomes available. I did have a bit of a hunt around uh, for that information. Obviously, with 2024 just finishing, um, clubs will obviously be asked to nominate. So if your club's looking to host an event, get in contact uh, with Bowls SA or... Through Bowls Australia, I think you can uh, basically list your venue as a uh, potential hosting uh, venue. I think uh, Kapunda have done a couple. Yes. Um, Henley, I think, have done a couple. Lockley's West Lakes will probably do a few this year. Um, so there's big opportunity there to, to host an event, so get involved. Absolutely. Um, BPL uh, 20, um, the Adelaide Pioneers will compete at BPL 20 at Pine Rivers, kicking off on the 11th of November. We did sort of give it a bit of a shout yeah, we out. Did. You know, we yeah. weren't too sure of the 11th of November. Though, yep, so we've confirmed yeah. that now. Um, Bowls Australia will have it on their socials, their Facebook page. Um, uh, KO, if you've got it, Foxtel, if you've got it, uh, usually runs from about 4.30 in the afternoon till yeah. about 9.30, 10 yeah, o'clock at night. It's just wall-to-wall bowls. So if you're, um, you're uh, looking for a bit of bowls to watch during the week, Certainly do that and obviously support the Adelaide Pioneers of uh, it's always good to watch. Wayne Rudiker, uh, yeah. stalwart there almost from day one. Yep. Uh, Scotty, Scotty Tholburn, uh, obviously there from day one. And like we mentioned in episode one, uh, Laney. Laney gets her chance at, uh, at, at the Adelaide Pioneers. And good luck to her. Absolutely. All right, mate, let's talk some national events. Uh, national teams coming up. Um, this time we're going to talk about the over 60s men's and women's. We'll start off with the men's. Uh, Rob Flavel, Ashley Halls, Ray Deanett, uh, and Daryl Steinwaddle. Yep. Pretty handy uh, yeah, rink handy there. Yep. Uh, Cole Watkins makes his, I think, his debut um, oh, okay. from Hawthorne. Yep, Obviously, yep. wished him uh, the best of luck today. Um, Don Bennett, Gary Meekums, and Gary Smith. Very yep, handy, handy bowlers there. You'd probably know uh, yep. Gary Smith there from Laura. Yep. Um, and then you've got uh, Bob Scott. Uh, played against Bob actually in the indoor qualifying a couple of years ago, and he ended up winning winning it uh, and getting going through to okay. the uh, Australian indoor qualifiers. So very very good bowler there, Tony Trelaw, yep. uh, Cole Harvey uh, bowled very well Cole. yesterday actually there, and Peter Gag- Gaglia? Oh, Gaglia. Yep, yep. Gaglia, yep, and the team manager there is uh, Peter Muller there from Narricourt. So okay. um, some quality players there, mate. What are you what are your thoughts uh, on that uh, specific team? Uh, very solid, very solid side. Um, yeah, couldn't get into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mate. <laughs> did, done the trials. You did the that, trials, yeah. Yep. Nah, not good enough for that. But uh, yeah, no, very handy bowlers yep. there. Really looking forward to maybe catching up with a few of those guys once they come back. Yeah. Not only about the experience there, yep. but obviously the opportunity to play uh, state uh, state yeah, representative absolutely. bowls, and hopefully they go all right. So really looking forward to touching base there. All right, let's talk about the over sixties women's. Uh, Gail Stein- Steinwater, yep. Jackie Field, yep. Chris Tholburn, and Beth Quinlan. Pretty solid yep. four there, Absolutely. I would uh, certainly say. Uh, we've got Raylene H- H- Hetterman. I think she was at um, 
Valley View oh, okay. and now at Modbury. So okay. uh, made the move there. I think yep. she plays mixed with uh, um, uh, Hayden Harper. So, oh, okay. um, and oh, that played yeah, for yeah, a couple. Yeah. Played for a couple yep, of years there. So play. there, Sue Cultus, um, yep. Sue Madden, and Sandy Wallace. Yep. Very, very handy rink there. And then uh, Claire, is it Etchen, Etchenberger? Etchenberger. Yep. Yeah, Etchenberger. Yep. Uh, again, apologies for pronunciations yep. there. Vicky Arben, uh, Sue Hutchins, um, and Kerry Trelaw from Berry with yep. uh, uh, Joan Prosser, the manager there. So yep. pretty solid Group of ladies there that uh, will go all right, I reckon. All play at pretty high level down here in town. So um, and some good country bowlers, obviously Kerry Trelaw from from Berry, yeah. yeah. And I reckon yep. Sue was playing Thursdays at Hawthorne, but now back at Handorf. Yep. Um, I'm not sure whether she's going to play some games down here on, on Thursday, but um, yep. yeah, it's pretty solid. Those yeah, over sixties, both in the men's and the women's, really looking forward to again touching base with them and. Fingers crossed a few results go our way. And, yeah, and uh, I think uh, that's uh, a bit of a hashtag going on through Bowls SA. Hashtag the Reds. The I Reds. think that's maybe wow. a bit of a nickname that they've there picked up. So, hey, best of luck to them yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's talk uh, the national scene. We're going to touch base on some pretty famous players here. And one of them is Aaron Sheriff announces, announces yeah, his international that. retirement after 17 years at the international Just level. Had enough or...? Oh, I think family. Yeah. Uh, he's now moved, I think, from Helensvale to Broadbeach, so there's okay. a little bit more going on there. Yeah. Um, I, I think, you know, he's played at such a high level for so long. I think now's the time that he wants to sort of sit yeah, back and enjoy it. wouldn't it? It, it is. Know. And and that next wave of players coming through, I mean, we talk about Blackie. Yeah, that's right. You know, Tyson Wilson's in that yep. sort of uh, mix as well. Um, you know, and the state players that are through New South Wales and Queensland pushing through, uh, not only gives them opportunity, That's but right. I think that, you know... What sort of age would he be? I reckon Aaron would be, just, just off the top of my yeah. head, would probably be in his mid to late uh, mid to late 30s, okay. going into his oh, 40s bugger. a little bit. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, and talking about Aaron, I mean, that, yeah. that final of the Australian Open oh. where he bowled that basically resting touch to win the, win the game... Um, was one of the best bowls oh, that you could ever see. Um, uh, you know, w- we'd love to get some footage on here as a hot shot. Maybe uh, I'm doing a bit of work behind the scenes with Bowls Australia to allow us to show some of that content. Yep. Some of the Bowls SA content that we've got, um, we, we've done all the right things there. We thank them, obviously, yep. uh, for providing that information to us um, and letting us have a you know a hot shot here and a hot shot there and, a, and maybe an interview here and an interview there. So yeah, really looking absolutely. forward to that as well. All right, mate, let's finish off with a couple of Big questions uh, or general questions are going around the bowl scene. Bowls SA announces that there is a zero dollar affiliation fee for all under eighteen bowlers. Mate, that's a great initiative. It is trying to promote youth, aren't they? Well, Don't I mean, it's a sport that in. that people think that is an older yeah, person sport. I'm not I mean, old enough to play bowls yet. Yeah, and I, and I started a new job, and I'm yeah. talking to the guys like oh, I'm playing bowls, and they're like, "Isn't that an old man sport?" <laughs> I mean, I'm. Getting older, but yep. they look at it as an older person sport. But really, when you look at it, it is becoming younger and younger and younger. Yeah. And zero affiliation fee for an under eighteen bowler, oh, I, I think, is a it. great it's initiative. Yes, so, uh, big tick there goes to Bowls SA. Uh, sure there's a few times where you scratch your head and go, eh, yeah, maybe. Cross, but but we on this occasion, we give them a big, big tick. So, yeah. really, really happy with that. And just to finish us off, mate, um, pink round, uh, November four to nine. Um, Bowls SA are partnering with the Breast Cancer Network yep. Association. Another good, cause. Another good cause. What I would really like to do, and I, I know it's a little harder for bowls clubs, it's a bit different, say, for footy clubs, is yep. maybe a, a, a change of uniform maybe for oh, one yeah. week. But if this is going to be an initiative, initiative mm. that is going to carry over from year to year, maybe clubs can get behind it and actually have a, a pink yeah, like added a pink, to their yeah. uniform or yep. a one-off uniform that... Uh, some of those proceeds might be able to go to a um, uh, a cause like this. Uh, I know that the men's, and we'll talk about this probably in, in episode three, is the yep. men's have prostate uh, oh, there round. Is yep, yeah, there is. Bring so that. we'll talk that yep. talk about that as well. So maybe there's an opportunity there. What colour do you bring in uh, there? Maybe a blue, <laughs> maybe, um, or something like yep. that, or something yep. that uh, represents oh, a good. little bit bigger, good or concept. maybe your normal uniform with a logo on the front or, yeah. or on the back that signifies that it's a one-off uniform. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah no, really looking right forward here. to it. All right, mate, we better wind things up there. Um, we're pretty much all right on time. Um, I thank you once again. Um, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, no, with my normal podcast, the, the, the tagline is we promise to do better. So we've got to come <laughs> up with a tagline. Maybe we'll open it up to the socials there. Give us, give us a tagline. Funny, could be serious, could be anything. <laughs> Uh, let us know what you think uh, our final sort of sign-off should be, but uh, I'll, I'm going to say it on this time. Episode three, we promise to do better, mate. Yep. Thank so you. Do I. Thank, Thank you very you. much, mate. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, mate.